So welcome everyone to today's show on happiness. Today we're going to be talking about relationships. We have a very special guest, Jenny Monson, who is a um, member of the uh, Satya Sai organization. Uh, she's also a trained and uh, professional counsellor who has looked at families, individuals, and has also worked in the area of palliative care. So I would like to extend a uh, welcome to Jenny. Welcome. Thank you, Peter. And I've also uh, jetted in from Western Australia, so my okay. home is in the southwest of Western Australia. Okay, great to have you. Thank you. Yes. Mm. So today's topic, what we're looking at is uh, happiness. Yeah. And we're looking at the role of relationships in um, in developing that sense of happiness. Sure. Um, often relationships can be seen as rocky or they can be seen as smooth. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, we, we experience relationships at home, um, at work and, and you know, basically mm. wherever we go. So, you know, just as a, as a general rule, what in terms of um, relationships, what are some of the key factors in, in, in a relationship that, that can make us happy? Okay, I'd just like to say first that uh, when you said about how important relationships are for yes. happiness, I was reading just uh, this weekend that one of the key factors in reducing life expectancy is loneliness. Uh, they've just right. done a piece of research okay. in America which was really interesting to me. Apparently, um, people who are isolated from contact with others who are not in relationships uh, have a much reduced life expectancy and it's quite significant. It's like 14% or something. Right. So that says to me that human beings need other people, yes. that relationships are a crucial part of our whole life. Yeah. And, and when you think of our, we start life in a family, um, we have our parents, we have our ch friends, uh, yeah. mentors, right through life. Without, without relationships, we don't exist, we die. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so it's, it's really a core or central to today's theme on happiness, is yeah. the relationships. Yeah, um, yeah so that's, I, I think even in the um, literature with pos positive psychology, mm -hmm. I know that there's been a big shift there and they've also yeah. identified mm. relationships positive relationships as a key identifier you know, yeah. for happiness. Absolutely, yeah. because um, there is a big connection between our physical, emotional and mental states. So that, for example, if we are depressed or unhappy, it affects our immune system, we can become physically ill and mentally right. ill. So our, the emotions we have and yeah. therefore our connections with other people are a key factor in yeah being well as well as being happy. Mm. So, so how do we have a fun, smiling, happy relationship? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I guess we're all different, that's one thing. True. So, yes. And we're all looking for different things in, in, yes. in other people. But I think one of the important things is to go um, into a relationship, whether it's with a friend or um, look, a partner, uh, with our children, with, with an appropriate expectation Okay. of um, you know what we can what we can get out of a relationship I think if we expect the other person to make us happy then it can uh, we can be disappointed right, so, yeah. for example I, I've actually come to discover that happiness is something that every being has inside them right so that if we look at the outside world to make us happy I think we can actually go down the wrong track yeah. Okay. And we, we, I suppose we see that all the time. Yeah. Um, and and have you seen in your experience as as well as in your work that mm. that people um, go into a relationship thinking that the other person or the the other person in their lives is going to make them happy, or is yeah. you know if mm. I'm with th this person, then mm. all of a sudden you know something is going to change for me. Do you see that happening? I think it happens all the time. Yeah. Um, we can, I think we might have the picture of the ideal person for us yeah. and that person's Mr. Right or Miss, Miss Right and once we're with them, you know, life will be perfect yeah. and in fact it doesn't happen because in a relationship we have to give a lot in order to have happiness. So it's a two-way street yeah. and we have to, uh, in fact, I think a lot of the secret of happiness in relationship is about giving rather than getting. Rather than getting, okay. Yeah. So that the person who's, I suppose, looking looking uh, at, at the other person to give them, um, complete them in, in, mm. in some way, 
um, the focus is more on giving. I, I think that's yeah. the secret. Right. Yeah. Okay, so giving, let's say, you know, if we, if we take an everyday situation um, in, in the home, for example, yeah. mm. um, parent and child, a child mm. probably is, may, may be able to give things or may, mm. may not. Um, mm. So how does that play out in a, let's see, you know, in a normal household? <laughs> okay, look. Children and parents. Sure. Yeah. In a, in a household, children learn first by watching their parents. Yeah. So if um, parents uh, are giving to each other yes. and children see that, they start to learn what relationships are all about okay. just by seeing yeah. and, and absorbing what's around so that's, them. That, that's interesting actually. So that's the first model yeah. or the first thing that yeah. a child is seeing is, is the husband and Absolutely, mum and dad. Mum and dad, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, so that's that's really a model, and then, you know, it, it, there is stresses on on a mum and dad yeah, <laughs> to, to create that model, and mm. and of, you know we do have our frustrations and we do have our uh, ups and downs, mm. um, stresses and pressures. So, mm. what's I suppose what what can we uh, what can we say to a to a mum and dad to to really model what are what are they supposed to model or what can they model? Um, Look, I, th I, I think one of the things that is really important is that people listen to each other and people right. are open to each other. I think often um, we think of, one of my favourite quotes is that um, communication is to relationship as breathing is to maintaining life. Right. So if we want to have a good relationship, we have to communicate with each other. And it's how we communicate that's important. People often think of communication as talking. It's actually more about listening. Because listening is actually the way we extend love to another person. We totally open our heart to let another person in. And I think a good definition of intimacy is into me see. Right. Okay. So when we really trust another person and have a close relationship and have intimacy it means we've opened up and we've allowed the other person to look in on us so if we're really able to listen to each other and be open with each other then we achieve understanding and out of that can come respect we can be compassionate to each other because we have an understanding of what's going on for each other yeah. i think self-awareness is important yeah. So if I notice, for if I feel uncomfortable, if I have a, an uncomfortable feeling about the way... Um, we all, like, like we've all, we all know, we have ups and downs. So, mm. so you know, how, how do we get back on track? Or um, how do we look at you know, what are one or two things? You know, we've, we've talked about listening and, mm. and communication. Mm. Um, is there any... I, Other think, things, yeah. I think the first thing is that we notice within ourselves that there's something that's not right. I think okay. awareness... That self-reflection. Yeah, yeah, I think self-awareness is important. Yep. So if I notice, for if I feel uncomfortable, if I have a, an uncomfortable feeling about the way I've spoken to my partner or my child, uh, I'll notice it inside. Um, so mm. self-awareness is important. And then mm. if I take notice of that, I've got a chance to do something about it. And that's yep. the first step, I think. Yep. Um, if we miss those little cues, we go down and, and, and sometimes there can be, we can start to drift yeah. further and further apart. Yeah. We haven't listened and been watchful of our own self. And so we've, we've just drifted apart. And then there can be distance. Mm. And I think that's the first wedge that happens in any relationship. When people yep. turn away from each other and they then start to lose their interest in each other and their focus. Yeah, I think mm. that self-awareness sometimes is challenging because mm. it, it's saying that uh, you're not perfect. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's easy to project that on the other person. Yeah. But to look in, in, in you and see, you know, what, you know, what potentially you could change, mm. I think is challenging. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And mm. I mean, mm. um, sometimes as well is we don't know what to look for. So yeah. when, when we look, you know, we, we look within. So 
I suppose the question is more about how do we do how, like the self-awareness if if we are not aware of what we're doing wrong mm. then is it a feeling is it um, it can be we can actually f feel uncomfortable ourselves yeah. right okay. but you know you said before about people often look for happiness outside yeah um, if we think that person over there can make us happy mm. what can then happen is that if this they're, they're doing something that we're not that we don't really like, mm. we can then start to blame them because we yep. think they're the reason for our happiness, yep. you see. So if I'm, for example, become unhappy, um, not to, you know, things are going wrong between yep. myself and my partner, if I'm into thinking other people make me happy, I'll start to blame the other person yep. and I'll say, he's the reason I'm not, you know, things mm. aren't going right. And that puts stress on... That puts stress on, the, yep. but it's, yep. it's also not the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Because really, for example, if I'm unhappy in a relationship, it's actually mm. about the unhappiness that's inside me. Mm. So I need to notice my unhappiness and do something about it, not expect that person to fix it up. Yeah, okay, because that mm. might be an unrealistic yeah. demand. That it's that my unhappiness, <laughs> yeah. That yeah. other person can't go in and, yeah. and do yeah. Yeah, to mm. that extent. Mm. But. Um, you know, relationships and that journey of happiness in relationships um, can be also a, a learning curve. Sure. Um, so it's it's mm. it's like a lifelong learning. So, in in uh, in in your experience, how has that learning happened, and how have you come to a you know a more broader understanding of what makes a relationship? Happen? What 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 I've discovered is that. Um, um, Relationships, particularly say, you know, marriage, hmm. it, it's a fast track to self-realization. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah I, I think it's something. If we go into marriage, for example, mm. thinking that this is going to be the answer to all our dreams, what I think we're gravely mis uh, we're mistaken. Mm. I think it's actually a pathway to becoming better human beings and to becoming yep. greater human beings. Yep. We learn so much about ourselves yep. and we become better people. It's all parts of the ups and downs of life. Yeah. And some of the greatest spiritual teachers have talked about how, um, what life is about yep. and about how the journey of life is all about discovering who we really are. And that's through going through all of these challenges, yep. particularly marriage. <laughs> because so marriage is the fast track. <laughs> that's the fast track. Because we learn so yeah. much about ourselves. Yeah. Because it's reflected in the other person. Yeah. So, for example, if I sort of think that if I see a certain quality in you that I don't like, what I've discovered is that that quality is actually in me, and I've just seen it in you. Yeah, so right, it's reflected okay. outside. Yeah. So again, everything comes back to happiness being within me. The answers are within me. Hmm. The tools are within me, and that, hmm. that is where I will find my happiness once I attend to my end of the relationship. Yeah, so it seems like the torchlight is on ourselves. Yes, <laughs> yeah, which is uncomfortable. Than, yeah, we like is, to shine it, it out is. there yeah. because it's, it's easier, easier to look at the problems out there <laughs> yeah. and blame other people. Yeah. But that's not, in fact, that's, that won't bring us happiness. That will just hmm. get us stuck further and further into um, frustration and yeah. ultimately depression and despair. Mm. Yeah, I think it's um, it is an uncomfortable, I suppose, torchlight. Mm. Um, but you know, it could give us the reward um, mm. of you know really understanding why we're happy or why we're not, mm. and and what the role of uh, relationships is. Um, Can I just say a little yeah. bit about um, I think other emotions that are important in this equation yes. of relationship. Uh, when we're in a relationship, we need to be fully there all of us, mm. not just one bit. So for example, um, as I go through life and particularly say through marriage, I'll have times where I feel sad or I feel um, excited, mm. I feel frustrated. Mm. Now, all of these things are important. We, we're not always going to be happy. Happiness is one of many experiences. Mm. We'll have the whole lot. So if we include all of us in the relationship and we accept all of those things in the other person, then we will have a balanced and rewarding relationship.
because mm. we're accepting and tolerant and open fully to ourselves and other people. Yeah. So mm. those other emotions are all part of the part of the package. package. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's yeah. Like, mm. yeah. As a human being, yeah. to be fully human, I have to be accepting and open of all of me. Mm. and of, of my partner or of my child or mm. of my mother and father. Yeah. But I think if people are willing, uh, particularly if the parents set down some boundaries for children, I think it's the role of the parents to keep the children. How do we uh, get things a bit more harmonious in, in the home? I mean, that, they're some of the most challenging relationships we might have. Mm. Um, you know, we've, I suppose we've looked at listening, we've looked at um, self-reflection, um, but when it just comes down to the everyday <laughs> chores and the everyday mm. ways that we communicate, um, you know, what, what, what works in the home? I think families are different. I think it depends yeah. on the stage of life, you know, the children are at. Um, mm. But I think if people are willing, uh, particularly if the parents set down some boundaries for children, I think it's the role of the parents to keep the children safe, if you like, yeah. to create some rules and structure so that children grow up. It's a bit like a, um, a little fence around a, a small tree. I think parents in the beginning need to set clear boundaries so that children feel safe and they know how far they can go and not go so that mm. uh, there are clear expectations and, and understandings within families. Then as the child grows up, it changes because it, the tree doesn't need that fence around it. So yeah. the child can then, with that good basis, have s safe sort of rules for life, if you like. Yeah. So it, it, the, the, the way the parents are changes as the child grows up. And eventually, um, what we want as a parent is for our child to be independent, to be able to function in life uh, with a, a good set of values to be mm. fulfilled. So our job is to um, do ourselves out of a job. We need <laughs> yeah, to let right. go of our children, I yeah. believe, so th and, and help them become independent um, people who, who will take risks in life, if you like, will have courage, will have mm. consideration for others. These are all the things, I think, that make for good family relationships as yeah. well. Okay, so yeah. the, the being able to um, think for themselves and... and, yeah. and, and so that means, you know, if parents encourage that sort of a culture in a family, then mm. they will encourage their children to um, take responsibility, to show consideration for each other, mm. respect, c care for each other. Yeah. yeah. I think these are all the things that are a good basis for relationships when those children want to go out in life and find a life partner or, you know, become parents themselves. Yeah, mm. okay, because they're picking up on the, on the model that they're seeing at home. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I mean, I've, I've heard a, um, well, there, there's a common saying, you know, tell me your company, I'll yes. tell you who you are. Yeah. Um, now you, you probably say, well, I interact with so many people and, and mm. you know, that, how does that tell, tell someone who they are? Mm. Um, but it's one of those that have stood the test of time. So mm. what, what's your, uh, what's your thoughts on that? I, th I think it's a true saying, tell me your company and I'll tell you who you are. I, I mean, obviously in life we have to go, we go to work, we have to interact with all yep. sorts of people. We can't choose our company all the time. Yep. But the people we choose to spend most of our time with, um, that we are attracted to, you know, for our key relationships, I mm -hmm. think it, it does reflect a lot of, of our own values mm -hmm. and, and who we are. Yep. So I think it is important that we choose, for example, a partner with similar values. The mm. more we have in common, the, the better a, a, relation, a lifetime relationship will be, for example. Yeah. 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 And uh, the other thing that we see is that the nature of relationships is changing. So yeah. um, mm. uh, a, lot of, a lot of kids are growing up on, online and mm. so you have like uh, Facebook and WhatsApp and Twitter. Mm. Yeah. Um, so you can have a whole relationship with someone that you've actually never seen or met. Mm. Um, the same is even true in the, in the workplace. Um, so you'll email someone mm. in another country or another state and mm. you, you have constant email um, communication but you mm. haven't actually met that person. Yet you, it's, it is some form of a, of a relationship and, mm. and it, you, know, you do see people's happiness 
greatly affected by what happens online. Yeah. Um, you mean positive and negative? Yeah. 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 So, you know, you, we share some of our joys online, and sometimes mm. you know there's bullying and, and yeah. things like that. So, mm. what are, what are some of the principles that we can have in in these these kind of virtual <laughs> relationships? So, mm. so are there any guiding principles there. Peter, I'm they? probably not a good one to ask about virtual <laughs> relationships because I'm not um, yeah. someone who uses that yeah. you know in my uh, to meet people yeah. but I know that this is important for many people who don't uh, who don't have opportunities to meet people under you know other circumstances yeah. so it can be an important way of, of connecting Connecting, yeah. But it's only a, a tip, a, a very small part of the relationship. So yeah. if you have a relationship online by email and whatnot yeah. for a year, you then, you know, when you finally meet up, I don't suppose you can go forever online. There, there must be a time <laughs> when you do meet that yeah, person. Yeah, hopefully, yes. Yeah, and I know there have been some successful relationships yeah. that have started that way, others not. Yeah. So I guess the issue is that you put your toe in the water, but then you do need to have intimacy, you know, mm. into me see when I said it before. Mm. So I think at some point you do have to connect, meet, um, take the risk of mm. being real with people mm. um, and experiencing who they are. Who they are. At yep. that point you may decide that you, yep. you're suited or you're not suited. Yeah. Mm. And, and, you know, I suppose going from that is that uh, generation will grow up using different technologies and different language and different mm. thoughts and then parents on the other hand are thinking I don't know how to connect anymore mm. to to the um, to to our children mm. and I suppose the common phrase is the generation gap mm. and things like that so how, how do parents kind of bridge that and, and bring uh, have some kind of a um, relationship with their teenager at that stage I'm not sure if you've had I, that I've heard of experience. creative things that yeah. you know I think sometimes people kind of meet in the middle like yeah. parent I know one mother who was telling me that she she goes on Facebook and tells her daughters upstairs that their dinner's ready and down they come <laughs> so yeah I guess it's yeah. somehow you have to try and enter each other's world yeah and uh, get a little bit of an understanding of of what it's about yeah. and because the communication has to be a two-way thing. Yeah. And I think if young people can see that their parents are making that um, step and trying to enter their world and understand, yeah. they feel valued. Yeah. And Just not too much. Yeah, not, <laughs> not entirely. That would be a disaster. They don't want mum and dad. <laughs> totally in there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, and yeah. I think it's the same that parents appreciate when the kids um, want to try and put themselves in their position. and. It's yeah. a two-way thing. I'm sure they'll be thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a really insightful journey. I think we've, we've looked at happiness in a variety of ways and it's, you know, it's come back to who we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as well as, you know, looking at some of the um, experiences in life that we share with mm -hmm. others because mm -hmm. we, we're not an island. No. We don't live by no. ourselves mm -hmm. and, and how that can enrich our lives. Um, I've really appreciated the open and uh, honest conversation. Thank you, Peter. I've enjoyed yeah. having the chat. Thank you. Thank mm. you. Being a, what I call, selfless servant of society. And every day and in every moment, making difference to the, to the humanity, helping humanity to progress. And underlying these, uh, these, uh, these strong purpose are actually two pillars. And the first pillar is what I call is my values. And the two important ones here are integrity and second is right action. And then the second pillar is capability.